The second major challenge that's addressed by Creo's any mode modeling breakthrough technology is the challenge of working in different CAD approaches, working in a parametric modeling approach and a direct modeling approach. As an example, let's take this parametric model. This is a parametric assembly, and I'm going to take that individual gray component there, and I'm going to open that up, not in a parametric modeling environment, but in a direct modeling environment. So, so as you see here, the geometry is exactly the same. All of the geometry is available in that direct modeling environment. But in the direct modeling environment, you'll see here up at the ribbon, I have just the capabilities that I need to make direct modeling changes and create geometry. So the first thing that I'll do is I'll select this collection of geometry, this, this boss, if you will, and I'll choose to translate it down the model. And as I do that, look at the fidelity of the geometry. Look at the agility of the model as, as, this, um, as this change is being made. That's the power of Creo's geometry kernel in action. So I'll go ahead and make this change. I'll slide it down to about there. I'll actually go ahead and, um, and drop it right there. Now that's one type of change I might want to make, a, a linear change down the, down the model. Let's take a look at the, end of the, um, at the end of this part where I have this nozzle. And what I'd like to do, this nozzle is actually comprised of about 13 different features in the parametric model. But in this environment, in the direct modeling app, it's just geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and select that collection of geometry, and I'm going to choose to place it not on the end of the part, but over here on the side. So I'll place it over here on the side, I'll orient it um, so that it's rotated in just the right way, and I'll go ahead and accept that change and, and, and place that, uh, place that um, nozzle here on the side. So those are two examples of some pretty radical changes that I've made in this direct modeling environment. Now, this modeling environment also has modeling capabilities. That is, I can create new geometry. So I'm going to go ahead and grab an existing section and place that here on the model. And I'm going to extrude that section. If you look at the, the toolbar here, you'll see many of the commands you would expect to find in a direct modeling application. For example, I can extrude sections. I can uh, place draft on, um, on that extrusion. So I'll go ahead and put a draft on the side here. I'm also going to create a fillet or a round um, that, uh, that goes around the base of that, uh, of that extrusion, of that drafted extrusion now. So I've got, I've got basic modeling capabilities and basic change capabilities. The last thing that I'll do is I'll select this entire boss, this entire collection of geometry, and I'll choose to pattern it. So I'll pick a, a, a direction for the pattern and an offset. I'll um, go ahead and uh, edit that offset to about 0.75, and I'll choose to have five different occurrences. And now I've patterned that geometry um, on top of this model. Now, I'm done with the work that I want to complete in the direct modeling environment, so let's go ahead and save this model. When I save this model, I save it to the Creo Common Data Format. That allows me to work with this exact same model in different applications. So we'll go ahead and we'll close this application here. And we'll open that exact same model up in the parametric modeling app. And when I do that, the first thing that I'm presented with is an environment here that shows me the changes that were made. So even though that model was edited in a completely separate application, all of those changes are tracked and presented for me. You can see here the original location of the, of the clip and the resulting location. You can also see the change to the nozzle that was made on the end of the part. And for each one of these proposed changes, I can review them, I can interrogate them, I can understand what user made each change, and I can either accept or reject them. So I've accepted all of the changes except the clip. You see that the clip is back in its original location here. But all of the other changes show up in the model. Now, now that I'm working with this model in the parametric environment, you'll see that all of the original features are also all preserved. So even though I went to a direct modeling environment, I didn't lose any of that parametric intelligence. In fact, the changes that I made in that, in that direct modeling environment are reflected as parametric changes. You see here that I can modify that pattern and regenerate the pattern. Even though I created, in the, created it in the direct modeling environment, I can change the offset and change the number of occurrences. I can also redefine each of those individual ribs. Now, although I created them in the direct modeling environment and never thought about features or history or design intent or change propagation, in the parametric environment, I have all of that power. So I can do things like go and redefine the section, recreate that boss with an entirely new profile, and then simply update the design. What does that mean? That means that my drafts, my rounds, my pattern, 
all of those are updated. So those direct modeling new geometries that I created are reflected here as features. The other thing that I'd like to show you is you may remember that this, that this nozzle on the end of the part was originally a collection of 13 different features. Even though I changed its location, I changed it pretty dramatically, that feature intelligence is still preserved. And I can go back and change the number of, um, of ribs on the outside of that and update that geometry. This is an unprecedented level of fluency between a direct modeling environment and a parametric modeling environment only possible with the AnyMode modeling from Creo.